Hi, and thanks for listening to Gossip with Celebrity, where we talk about entertainment news, celebrity gossip, fashion, and royals. This week, we're talking about the latest royal scandal, Joe Biden touching women inappropriately, Nicolas Cage getting married, and Game of Thrones. I also saw us and have a spoiler-free review. Our user question is about how we cover breaking news, and we end with our weekly feature, the comments of the week. Hi, I'm Katie, the founder and editor of Celebitchy.com, and I write as Celebitchy. And I'm Chandra, the head writer for Celebitchy, and I write as Kaiser. All right, so last week we were not able to record. Um, I had some complications from that procedure that I had. What I did was I made a notice on Twitter, and then we put that in the links on Monday. If you notice that we're not around on a Monday and you're expecting a podcast, just check Twitter because I'll pin it to the top of the Celebitchy Twitter. I wanted to thank everybody who wished me well on Twitter and also especially, I don't know how you pronounce her name, but my Twitter friend, I call her Jackie B, J-A-Q-C-B. Yeah, I think that's how it is. Jackie B. Yeah, Jackie B. She helped me like in the Twitter direct message and I wanted to thank her for that because she went through this procedure too and she gave me some good advice. So, And on my end, I have an announcement. I got a haircut and I absolutely hated it. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what happened? I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been getting it shorter and shorter. I used to have really long hair. Like it was down pretty much like the middle of my back. I remember, yeah. Yeah, and I just kept trimming off a little bit more every time I went in for a haircut. And right now it's like to my shoulders and I feel like Connie friggin' Chung. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. (laughs) That's my big announcement. Katie feels like hell, and I feel like Connie Chung. (laughs) At least you didn't get bangs. Oh, yeah. I will never get bangs. Well, you have that beautiful thick hair, so it'll grow back, and I'm sure it grows pretty fast. It does. That's why I keep on getting it cut shorter and shorter, because I'm like, well, you know, it keeps on growing, so oh, well. I'm sorry. All right, so that's sucks. enough with the personal stuff. <laughs> we have like 20 million royal stories. So shall we get into it? Sure, go ahead. All right. Two weeks ago, the Tatler published a story that was just absolutely horrendous and completely negative about the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle. Yes. And a lot of it was just a compilation of negative stories that we've heard before. And it was interesting to see it all in one place, like all of these conspiracy theories and uh, negativity. And we found out later that the guy who wrote it has a deep connection to the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton. That was shady. He went to school with her? Yeah. The Well, the new editor went to school with her and the the guy who wrote it, I don't even know. It's a connection to Kate. Um, I don't think that, like, Kate ordered it. I just think that it's part of a huge campaign of negativity towards Megan. The big story that we talked about today, which will be last week from the podcast, was the story about the Queen denying Megan the jewelry. Oh, yeah. Kate gets to wear a lot of the jewelry that has been set aside for like the Princess of Wales, the stuff that Diana used to wear. And Kate has gotten to wear a lot of those like tiaras, earrings, and like one big necklace. So now the story from the sun is that Meghan will just never be able to wear any of the royal collection jewels from that Princess Diana ever wore. And it's as some sort of punishment for Meghan. Like, the Queen told William directly. What was that? Meghan asked to wear a tiara when she was in New Zealand or something, and Prince Charles told her no. Was she just asking, like, would a tiara go with this outfit or something like that? The way I read it was that Meghan was asking about protocol. That Meghan was like, is this dinner going to be an event where I should wear a tiara? And Charles told her no. It's not going to be that kind of event. But they made it into a big thing like Charles denied, you know, Megan the opportunity to wear a tiara because Kate is going to be queen. You know, that's (laughs) and I mean, that's like the the ending to every negative Megan story these days is Kate is going to be queen. 
But I don't know, like you said, I doubt it's this is coming from Kate. And also, it does sell a lot of tabloids for the British press. Yeah, a, a lot of it is British tabloids just being tabloids. I agree. But I also think that the root of it is coming from somewhere. And it's coming from Camp Cambridge and the royal courtiers who absolutely have made it their mission in life to put Meghan, quote unquote, in her place. So the real dirt is whatever is going on with Kate and her neighbor. Oh, yeah. Rose Hambury. That was a really weird story. It came out on a Sunday and everyone was like, oh, Kate. And her friend are fighting like, oh, I remember when I'm fighting with my friend and you don't want to talk to them for a while. And it could be over whatever, you know, you have falling outs with your friends. It was like aristocratic flavored beef, though, because Rose Hanbury is the Marchioness of Chumley, which is a big deal. It's high up British aristocracy. Okay. And she's very pretty. And her husband is a lot older than her, and he has this ancient title and this huge, like, palace or castle or something. I don't know. They call it a hall, but it's just (laughs) a a huge mansion. They live a few miles apart from each other. And, I mean, even when the first stories started coming out, you know, there was nothing shady beyond their rural rivals. I can't say that. That's a tongue twister. (laughs) Rural rivals. People were like, well, maybe William is having an affair with this woman. Maybe that's why they're rivals. The actual gossip about the affair didn't come out until days later. And that came out because after that, someone said that William is going to speak out against, what was this quote? Oh, yeah. William went to Richard K. at the Daily Mail. William is determined to act as extraordinary rumors engulfed his family, threatening to disrupt their domestic yeah. tranquility. <laughs> it was very overkill for what was a silly gossip story of a duchess fighting with a marchioness. The heart of it was very silly to begin with, and then... Prince William just went completely overboard and basically threatened to sue everybody if they reported anything about anything. Did he really say that? Is it a source close to him? Like The thing that I question is how much of this is just tabloids making up shit to sell copies? The Sun originally just said that Rose and Kate are beefing and that they're out in Norfolk and uh, Kate is trying to phase out Rose. Okay. And I took that to be... Just gossip from Norfolk. Yeah. People were talking, just general gossip, and no one really knew what was happening. But the way Richard Kay wrote the story in the Daily Mail a few days later, Richard Kay made it sound like William contacted him. And that's the way he wrote it. He wrote it very much through the perspective of this is what Prince William's or people close to Prince William are saying, because that's how the royals protect themselves. When they yes. want to talk to a reporter. It was very much, this is the official line from Prince William. So nobody was really thinking affair until Prince William was determined to act against these rumors. And that, that made everybody go, ooh, what rumors? We thought it was just a couple of people fighting over, you know, where they can hunt or whatever <laughs> those people fight over. <laughs> After that, the British papers were absolutely silent because I think they're afraid that Prince William really was going to sue them. But there's been a lot of gossip on Twitter. There was one guy, got Giles something. He's a food critic, and he tweeted and deleted a confirmation that there is an affair. But I don't know whether or not he should be believed or whether or not he was just a shit stirrer. Yeah. Everybody thinks, well, of course he would do that because that's what his dad did. That's what he knows and what he grew up with. He's got to be bored because everybody does everything for him and it's not like he works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First, do you think he would have an affair? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's what those people do. Yeah, that's what they do. You know, of course yeah. he would. Do you think he's ha- sleeping with this Rose woman? You know what I was reminded of? Remember when Shania Twain's husband slept with their her best friend? Yeah. And... Dudes sleep with whomever's around. It's a convenience thing. So, yes. I think there's something to that. And that reminds me of the Jeff Bezos thing, too. Someone made the comment that 
Jeff Bezos, he's one of the most successful businessmen in the world, and he's not a hunter romantically. You know, he just went for a mistress who was right there in front of him. I've seen that too with my friend's husband's cheating on them, and you're like, wow, why did he pick her? You mm -hmm. know? Because she was there. Yeah. Because she was yeah. right in front of him. She was down for it, you know? And I think probably that's very true in royal circles too, especially with a royal man and a married woman. They think married women are very safe, that she'll oh, be less yeah. likely to gossip. Yeah. Like she has something to lose too. Yeah, exactly. Whether he's cheating or not, we haven't heard as much about that because it's all been nitpicking the crap out of Megan, who's due any day now. That's one of the theories. That's been dominating the press. It's all like crazy stories about her doing nothing. Like, <laughs> you know, she's not even doing anything bad. She's like, oh, should I wear a tiara with this outfit when I'm making a state visit? You know, who cares? <laughs> Yeah, she's been on maternity leave for a few weeks, and like the negative stories have not stopped at, at all. And she didn't even do anything bad. Those stories aren't even that damning to her. If that's the best yeah. they got, you know, come on. Whoever is leaking all this stuff, they're the ones who look petty. And the big one this week, too, was that people warned her about her baby shower. Her friends paid <laughs> for her baby shower. Like, how is that a problem? She has rich, famous friends, and they're like, oh, let us throw you a baby shower. But that... people are still, like, crazy mad about it two months later. They are still, like, upset that it sent the wrong message. What, that her friends treated her? That she wanted to get away for a few days? I do see the uproar over her clothing being too expensive, and that's one thing that they, that they have on her, which is somewhat legitimate. But... Don't all the royal women wear expensive clothing? And who knows how much they actually pay for it or if it's gifted to them or whatever. Yeah, I said that in the stories that I've written about the price of her clothing. I've said that, you know, she's left herself open to this criticism. She is spending too much money. But I think the numbers are being overinflated because it's about Megan. Yeah, that's the only legit thing they have on her that I've heard about. Yeah. Nobody says a bad word about you know, her doing her job, but except for her <laughs> wanting other people around her to, to do their job too. Oh, they are so freaked out about that too. Oh my God. You mean they expect us to work? You know, we we're used to putting in a solid 20 hours a, a week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's enough Royal stuff. You want to talk about Joe Biden? Oh yeah. That, I mean, that whole thing is a mess. <sighs> So Lucy Flores is the first woman to come out and say something about Joe Biden. She was running for a lieutenant governor of Nevada in 2014. And she said that backstage, Joe Biden smelled her hair and kissed her on the head before she was supposed to go speak and that it made her uncomfortable. And after that, you know, several other women have come forward. There's plenty of video of him hugging people too long, touching them. One woman said he tried to touch noses with her. And his apologies have been shit, frankly. Yeah, they have been. When Lucy Flores first made her statement, his spokesperson was like, that never happened. Yeah. And then Biden himself released a statement saying, talking about how he's, he never meant anything and that he's listening to what Lucy has to say and what other women have to say. And then finally he came out with a video and he's acting like the rules have changed, but that he'll adapt. So here's a segment from Biden's video, and um, it's just a small piece of it. I've always tried to make a human connection. I shake hands, I hug people, I, I grab men and women by the shoulders and say, you can do this. And it's the way I've always been. It's the way I've tried to show I care about them and I'm listening. The social norms have begun to change, they've shifted, and the boundaries of protecting personal space have been reset. And I get it. And I'll be much more mindful. That's my responsibility. All right. Now, we didn't play the whole thing, but as you noted in the post, he never said he was sorry. No, he did not. He never expressed regret for making women feel uncomfortable. And we're so used to this. Like, as women, we are used to, to being manhandled, h hugged too long, grabbed. At, at Aretha Franklin's memorial, I remember how Ariana Grande got like grabbed around the arm and squeezed by that pastor. And it's just so recognizable to us as women. It is. And people are saying, why didn't these women come forward before? Like, it's their issue. 
It's because we all ignore it. It happens to us so often. We see it so often. We just ignore it. We take it as just a part of living that there's always going to be some guy in the office or on the street who's going to paw at us or stand too close or sniff our hair or, (sighs) you know, try to kiss us on the back of the head. It's gross. And we just now have developed a space where we can actually talk about how gross it is. And how invasive. And yeah. I told you this story. I was at a party that my parents had like a couple years ago and I was going to the bathroom and no one could see it. And this man grabbed me around my waist and squeezed. What am I going to do? Yell at him in front of the whole party and make a scene? Then it's my problem. Mm -hmm. So I told my mom and I don't think she told his wife because you can't really tell the wife. What, What do you do? You know, she told somebody else. They all know about this guy and that he does that. He didn't grab my ass. You know, what can I do? And that's exactly how I I think people felt about Joe Biden is everyone yeah. knew. Everyone knew that he was too handsy. Everyone knew that he liked to be inappropriate with women. You know, you can argue that he didn't mean anything, but women still felt uncomfortable. Women still felt like it was inappropriate. It puts us in our place, too. It, and that's what Lucy Flora said. It yeah. makes you feel lesser than. You know, and it makes you feel, you feel like you were there to do a job and he was there trying to feel you up. Yeah. And trying to tell you that you're an object. You know, you're mm-hmm. not a capable equal. But I don't think he's the great hope for the Democratic Party. And the asshole hasn't even said he's not running yet. Just <laughs> fucking, sit, you know what I mean? Yeah. I Just do. Just step the fuck down. And it's not some big plot by the Bernie Bros. You know, it's it isn't. not. And it's not a Republican plot either. No, no. It's not any kind of plot. It's just women telling their stories because they feel like they finally have a space to tell their and stories. And we haven't written, That's all it is. You haven't, we haven't covered this as much, but fuck the women caping for him. Like, oh, I'm fine with him. He was fine with me. No, that's not the point. No, you know, it's not. It's not the point. And we don't need an old white dude. We don't. We have to <laughs> all get behind whoever... I'll vote for no, who's ever on the ticket. It's not going to be Joe Biden. It's not going to be Bernie. And I don't think it's going to be Beto either. But whatever. Right now, it's all about the white men as far as the Democratic Party is concerned. Everyone's talking about Budish Udicic, Udicic. I tried to listen to how you pronounce his name. Oh, Mayor Pete. Pete. Let's just call him. Everyone's talking Mayor about Pete Budicic. <laughs> I linked him up. <laughs> well, everything I've read about Mayor Pete, he sounds like a really cool guy. And he does sound pretty good, yeah. If he was Senator Pete or Governor Pete, I think, you know, he would definitely be really big candidate to a watch. Strong contender, yeah. Yeah, but he's Mayor Pete. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I'm kinda scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I <laughs> don't really be am. scared. I see all those headlines about Bernie and friggin Biden and all that. And I'm like, oh, these people are so stupid. You know, it's April 2019. We have a long way to go. Oh, it'll happen sooner than you think. And I'm just worried. I'm really worried we're going to get four more years of this bullshit. We're not. I promise you we are not. Yeah, you told me Green Book wasn't going to win the Oscar (laughs) either. (laughs) i want you to be right i really do this is a smaller story that we were covering but it was just too sort of absurd and ridiculous and out of nowhere not to mention but nicholas cage eloped in las vegas uh, to a very young makeup artist named erica i don't know how to pronounce her last name koyaki yeah i don't know how to pronounce it either erica well, just call her Erica. Nicholas yeah. Cage married Erica, a mysterious makeup artist. <laughs> and um, Like, no one knows what she looks like either. We had some <laughs> yeah. pictures of her and she looks one way. Another picture, she's like a shorter woman, a different woman. So we don't even know what she looks like. I really think that she enjoys some wigs. <laughs> I was thinking about that as I was trying to look through photos of her. I think she loves a wig. Okay. But, um... Yeah, so they got married. All of a sudden, it turns out that they were drunk as skunks. Yeah. Both of them. And 
he apparently didn't even know her that well. They were together for like a year or something, though. Yeah, that's what the official story was. But <laughs> he didn't know that she had gotten a DUI. She was living with them, but she was also seeing a bunch of other dudes, or at least one other dude. One other dude, yeah. She was in a relationship <laughs> with somebody else. And that's what his annulment cited fraud, because she was in a relationship, and he said he was too yeah. intoxicated. So he's filed for an annulment, and she's not going to fight it. But before all of the annulment talk, everyone was like, this is kind of a sad gold digger situation, because he's broke as hell. Yeah, so I was looking through our archives, and it was 10 years ago that he had all those liens on his properties. He had, like, castles in England and Germany, island in the Bahamas. He had, like, a Johnny Depp situation going on, and he's friends with Johnny Depp. So yeah, they is. were probably trying to outspend each other. And he, had homes he was all like, over the world. He was buying dinosaur bones. Yeah, he was and... buying dinosaur bones. He had like venomous snakes, and then he would have right next to it the anti venom, like in a glass case, like in one of his movies. Seriously, I read this fascinating article in the Daily Beast detailing his spending. He would have, I think it was called Gatsby style parties. He would buy a new Maybach or whatever. <laughs> Best car came out like every month. His house looked like a, a car dealership. You'd go in there and there'd be cars sitting out in the foyer like lit up. And all of that stuff is now the property of the government, basically. A lot of it is. Yeah, he didn't pay taxes on any of it. The IRS seized almost everything. And he blamed his money managers because that's what those people do. They're like, oh, it's not my fault. So you were supposed mm -hmm. to look at it. But yeah, I'm sure he still has some money. He makes like a million crap movies every year. You know, he does. He's constantly making those movies. Well, she didn't get her hands on whatever money he has left. So praise be to Nicolas Cage for getting the annulment, I guess. I bet he was like Charlie Sheen, though. He would just throw money at stuff. I, that's kind of guy he seems like. That's very, I bet that's very true. Because you know. Nicolas Cage is looking rough. Like, he's 55 years old, and he's still getting drunk and marrying random women in Las yeah, Vegas. That's, yeah. So, also, Game of Thrones is coming out. Everybody's really excited for that. It will be this coming Sunday. So, it's exciting. It's April 14th, and everyone okay. has it marked on their calendars. The trailer came out several weeks ago. That was like the real trailer with actual new footage. And then this week, three teasers were released, and a lot of it was just old footage from the original trailer. But there was some new stuff. It looked like it was shot specifically to be the teaser, and it was all the snow at Winterfell and all of these pieces, like talismans of major characters, Jamie Lannister's hand and oh. uh, Jon Snow's sword, and Arya's sword, I think, and Bran's wheelchair. And you're supposed to think that maybe all of these major characters died at the Battle of Winterfell. Oh. I think the Battle of Winterfell is going to take over for maybe like two episodes, and there are only six left. So maybe two episodes are going to be the Battle of Winterfell, and then the rest of it is going to be figuring out what happens next. Because hopefully they defeat the White Walkers. Cool. I don't know. I have no real predictions other than a lot of people are going to die. And <laughs> <laughs> and I hope to God Cersei is one of them. Because if Cersei is one of the survivors, it is going to drive me crazy. I don't have a dog in this fight, but I think it's funny. I keep seeing signs and memes about Arya. Like, if Arya dies, we riot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that's very true. Everyone has their faves, but if Arya eats it, especially if she eats it, I don't know, early in this season, it's gonna be rough. But they don't have any qualms about killing people off, right? The showrunners don't care. Like they'll kill whoever. Yeah, but at this point, we do have a sense of who the core storylines are. You know, the the core characters and Jon mm -hmm. Snow, Arya, Sansa. There's some reason they that they're still alive. 
And if it's to die in the final act, oh, it's just going to kill a lot of people. <laughs> and everybody's freaking out. They want to tell the spoilers and they can't. Oh, yeah. I do feel bad for all the actors. Mm -hmm. And usually they only send out like some of the actors to promote it. But I guess since it's the final season, they're like, yeah, just send everybody out. And nobody <laughs> can talk about it, though. You know, any plot line, anything that happens. Oh. Amelia Clark said she was like dying to tell and she's like, oh, I want to tell. <laughs> um, Amelia has kind of let it slip in so many ways that she's in the very final episode. So, oh, okay. I mean, she either dies in the final episode or <laughs> she survives and she's on the, whatchamacallit, the throne, the Iron Throne. Oh. Oh, I can't yeah, believe that's I forgot the... that. <laughs> the Iron Throne. <laughs> that's the Jesus. end. Like whoever. Yeah. That's what, okay. So I saw Us, and I really liked it. I wanted to talk about it a little bit. I'm not going to reveal any spoilers at all. Um, it has been killing it at the box office. It made $70 million the opening weekend. And I think as of today, it's made like $180 million globally. So it's doing great, for, mm -hmm. especially for a horror movie. And it's rated R, right? I th yes, it is, because my, uh, my son went to go see it, and he had to get parental permission. <laughs> He's tall enough, but... But they want to make sure he was 17. Yeah, it's rated R. It's still doing great. It was a lot of fun. It's the kind of movie where it's not super scary when you're watching it. But afterwards, when I was home and like the ice maker was on, I was getting scared and picturing people outside the door. <laughs> oh, that's the kind of horror movie that drives me up the wa wall. I'm glad you said that. I'm not going <laughs> to go see it now. I needed someone to tell me that. It's haunting in the way that if you're alone in your house, you'll get freaked oh, out. Oh, I wasn't alone. I mean, I had people with me <laughs> and I still got scared. I was like, what's that? You know, and I was picturing this and I didn't even think it got me that much. It didn't have a ton of jump scares. It did have a lot of violence. There were some like funny parts, but he didn't overdo it. I mean, he knows how to make a good horror movie and how to balance everything. Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele. He is excellent. There's even a scene where it was totally designed so that you yell at the person, don't do that. Oh, my God. Don't go out there. <laughs> he knew. He knew to put that in there. And I'm not going to reveal the twist, but the premise was crazy and it was different than I thought from seeing the trailer. So I recommend it and it was fun. That's cool. I was absolutely stunned to realize that this is Lupita's first lead role in a movie ever. And she's excellent. And she played, you know, dual versions of herself and she really can act. It's insane to think that, you know, years after she won her Oscar, this is the very first time that anyone has given her a lead role. And it is. And the amazing thing is that it's a huge hit. That people she's are like promoting really the hell into out it. of it too. Like yeah. she showed up at a I was following her Twitter and she showed up at a screening in LA with a little mm -hmm. red turtleneck on, carrying some scissors. <laughs> they're doing a great job promoting that. They went to Howard University, and I mean, they're, oh my God, it's a good movie, you know, and it's it's fun to watch. And there's so much stuff embedded into the movie that you could go back and watch it again, and I totally would watch it again. That's how Get Out was. I felt like I yes. could watch that yes. a million times and still see new layers that he put in it's clever he worked in a lot of little clues yeah i like i feel like i want to cry sometimes when i think of how proud i am of him of jordan peele and what he's doing right now he's a freaking awesome filmmaker he really he's, is and to yeah. think he was on mad tv and then he and keegan michael created their own show yeah then he like does all that and he's like this amazing writer director it, he's, he's an a, incredible he's filmmaker. such an incredible yeah. guy. He is. And I personally don't care if he never writes a lead role for a white dude anymore. Like, that, that was the what big was controversy. What was up with that? Oh, let's talk about that. Because <laughs> I was like, okay, that's cool. Everything else is default white people. Yeah. You know, and he had white people in this movie. He didn't have to make the best friend couple all white. Yeah. You know, he didn't have to include a lot of white people, and he did. It's not like he's not casting white people. <laughs> he, and he was very specific when he said that, that he said, I don't want to cast a white dude in the lead role. He's fine yeah. with casting white people 
in secondary parts. We rarely ever see movies starring black people, you know, so let's have some more movies. Who cares? You know, like <laughs> once in a while. So. <laughs> well, he's literally writing and directing his own movies so that he can tell the kind of stories he wants to tell. And people are so butthurt about that. They're like, why can't you make films starring white people? Oh, because <laughs> that's all the other films do. Hello, all the other films do. Like, come on. Yeah, he's putting black people in lead roles in modern stories and it original stories. That's a, too. that's a great point too. We're not having so much stuff now is like remakes. Yep, superhero movies. You know, it's just very limited genres, and he's writing entirely new films. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe the people commenting with the reverse racism argument. <laughs> I mean, come. That's not a thing. That's I not it was a funny. thing. I mean, it was it was funny. They were like, no, you don't understand. When Michelle Obama says black girls rock, that's racism. No, it's not. It is so not racism. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is so dumb when people make that argument. I just can't. No, you're banned. Sorry. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Go ahead and spout your bullshit somewhere else. You know? <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the user questions. Our number is 434-218-3219, and you can email us at info at celebity.com and contact us at Twitter or via Instagram. So here's a voicemail that we got from Karen. Hi, this is Karen. Um, I write as Blue Sky. I uh, love your podcast. Uh, I have a two-parter. Uh, the first question is when you have a breaking story after you all have finished um, posting stories for the day, um, how is it decided who will be the one to write it up and post it? And the second question is what breaking story has caught you off guard or caught you by surprise? Thanks. Okay, this is a good question. We do have a schedule that works for us, and that's where we post in the mornings on Eastern Time. So we post from about 7 a.m. to noon. We'll cover breaking news if it really needs to be covered. You know, nobody's coming to us for breaking news. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll cover it if it, you know, if it's really necessary. If it's a huge breaking news story in an afternoon, I think we usually do cover it. We do, uh, yeah. But it's it's always a judgment call between us. Sometimes you just make the judgment call on your own that the story is big enough to warrant like some sort of breaking news coverage. If you're at the gym, you go to the gym Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays. So if you're at the gym, I'll cover it. And if you're not, I'll, you know, try to get in touch with you if, if it's something that you've been covering. Um, if somebody died, usually I'll just cover it. Like when Luke Perry died, those catch us off guard when people die. Even if we know that they're sick, it's still sad. It's hard to cover those kind of stories. Yeah. Um, and I remember doing like breaking news coverage of Gwyneth announced her divorce and it was in the like oh, early yeah. evening, and I think I threw up a post really quickly. Operation that Varsity Operation, Blues, yeah. that caught us off guard. We didn't know how much that was going to blow up. Yeah, and but that happened kind of like mid morning, and I I got the post up pretty quickly. Jesse yes. Smollett, the charges being dropped on him, that caught me off guard, <laughs> big we time. We didn't really talk that much about that story. It just too bad you know the whole thing was a mess <laughs> i'm just gonna say it, it caught me off guard i was not expecting all those charges to be dropped um yeah let's see big divorce stories deaths i guess it was 2017 when the new yorker finally published their harvey oh. weinstein story yeah yeah and i did breaking news coverage of that so We'll cover it if it's a huge breaking news story, and we'll just, whoever's around will cover it. Yeah, pretty much. And that's how we do it. All right, so let's move on to the comments of the week. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't say at the beginning, but I am still on painkillers, so I'm a little <laughs> bit out of it. So you wrote that story about Tucker Carlson saying that if feminists had absolute power, every man would be Chris Hayes. Mm-hmm. He's an MSNBC commentator, right? And he's just a real decent guy. Yeah, Chris Hayes, he has the 8, 8 p.m. show on MSNBC, and he's mm-hmm. sort of like, he's sort of dorky and sweet, and he's very woke. He likes women. He he is a feminist. He's very aware of like his white privilege. Tucker Carlson was just like absolutely making fun of him for like daring to listen to what a woman has to say, basically. <laughs> and so my comment of the week is from Valiantly Varnished. And she said, if feminists had absolute power, every man would be Chris Evans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's the best Chris, but yeah. No, he's not my best. Chris Pine is definitively the best Chris. Chris Pine? I don't know. (laughs) It's between Chris Pine and Chris Evans. Well, my comment of the week was from the very first story about Duchess Kate and her beef with the Marchioness of Chumley. It was before we, you know, were even talking about the affair and everyone was just wondering, why would these two women have a falling out? And Skylark theorized, it's over Chutney. Kate prides herself on being keen queen of Chutney within her set, and Rose has just launched her own homemade uh, Chumley Chutney, which will, (laughs) unwisely, within Kate's hearing, declared the much fruitier and tastier. Hashtag Chutney Wars. (laughs) <laughs> this, is, this is true because Kate made homemade chutney for the queen. Uh huh. That was her big Christmas offering. Her Christmas <laughs> gift was homemade chutney. Oh, <laughs> my Indian father would have been shivering in his grave. <laughs> chutney. I've had it a couple times. It's like a jam. It's like a savory jam or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a. A jam with Indian spices, basically. Okay. (laughs) Hey, we breezed through that pretty quickly, though. We did. Thanks for listening, bitches. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, bitches. Thank you for listening to this Levity podcast. If you could please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or your platform of choice, it will really help us, and we appreciate it a lot. You can call us and leave a voicemail at 434-218-3219. Our website is celebity.com, and we're also on Twitter under that handle and on Instagram as Celebity Official. Thanks again.